welcome everybody. Um, this is the session to show um, how to make uh, fabric even faster, I mean, even easier to, to use, because <laughs> fabric is already very easy to use, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so um, we're going to look at a demo of Farfly uh, component. Um, it's part of the Farfly ecosystem. Uh, it's a component called FabConnect. Uh, I don't have any slides, but I do have two architecture charts to show, and then we'll look at a demo of, of FabConnect. Um, first, uh, first off, I uh, want to just, who knows Farfly or has been using Farfly? Mm, yes, okay, a few hands. And Nico here, if you don't know him already, uh, he's our community lead and lead developer on Farfly. Um, so if, uh, after the session, if you have any questions about Farfly, make sure to seek him out. Uh, that's right, unless it's for about FabConnect. Um, so Farfly is a um, uh, collection of many components working together to make blockchain much easier to use. That's basically what Farfly is. Supports many protocols, both uh, permissioned, uh, also public. Um, so, in fact, uh, I'm not going to steal Nico's thunder. He has a session on Farfly dedicated to Farfly at 4.30, uh, along with Steve, our CEO of Kaleido. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to tell you guys that uh, the 1.1 version just got released um, 15 minutes ago or something like that. So it's a major, major milestone for us. You will hear more about it uh, in his session. Uh, I'm Jim Zhang, uh, one of the co-founders of Kaleido. Uh, so Farfly is, um, as you can see, uh, a core component. Farfly uh, uh, is the central microservice that coordinates all the things that uh, happen around the other components. Uh, on the very bottom uh, are the ledgers, right? Um, you can see there are flavors of public chains like Ethereum, we actually support, um, as of 1.1 uh, of Farfly, all different flavors of EVMs on different public chains are all supported. You can go to Ethereum, Polygon, uh, Arbitrum, uh, Optimism, uh, even Polkadot, Moonbeam, for example. There's a whole range of them. Wherever EVM and standard JSON RPC is supported, you can use Farfly to connect to them. Uh, and manage your tokens, uh, manage your digital assets. And then on the permission side, uh, Fabric, um, Chrome, Besu are all supported, and there's partial support for Corda as well. Uh, so on the very bottom are the, uh, the protocols, and IPFS is also useful for uh, uh, file sharing. And then on top of that are the connectors. This is where uh, FabConnect uh, belongs to. So the connectors will do protocol translation so that the high-level Farfly API requests will be uh, translated into native uh, uh, JSON RPC or gRPC uh, requests, uh, and events will flow in the other direction. And then on top of that, you have the transaction manager. Uh, this is not very applicable to uh, fabric, because fabric is very efficient. You, you throw in a transaction, it'll be there uh, in one way or another, either successful or failed, but it'll be there. Uh, but that's not the case with Ethereum, especially if you are talking to a public chain. Uh, if you've all attempted to work with Ethereum, especially uh, in the public chain, you will know there are many hundred ways to fail for your transaction to not uh, end up in the block. Uh, even uh, e e both before it gets accepted by the node or even after it gets accepted by the node. So we have a transaction manager that manage all kinds of uh, errors that the, the, the server gives you and try to compensate to make your transaction uh, have a much higher chance of getting uh, onto a block. On top of that, we have the token connectors that understands token standard uh, based on the underlying protocol. So we have built-in support for ERC-20, 721, which is for fungible token, non-fungible token, 
as well as uh, ERC 1155, which is a combination of fungible and non-fungible. And at, at all these layers, uh, uh, each layer is pluggable. So if you have other protocols, if you have other token standards, you can plug those in uh, as well. And at the very top is the, is the brain that orchestrate everything. So each of these boxes is a standalone microservice that work together. Um, so that's a very quick uh, um, overview of Firefly. Uh, I can't do it just enough justice, but that's not the focus of today. Uh, with today's focus is on this component called FebConnect, uh, which connects Firefly to uh, a Fabric network. It supports Fabric CA and Fabric um, uh, Orderer and uh, Peer Nodes. What it does is it gives you a um, RESTful interface so you can post uh, JSON payload to it at various endpoints so you can create identities uh, with the Fabric CA, enroll them, and then uh, submit transactions to it. Uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, lining up the, um, uh, the transaction pa uh, parameters. You can use uh, s a strong typed uh, JSON structure uh, to send to your transaction uh, endpoints. And then uh, you can create subscriptions for events. So when uh, certain types of events are happening, uh, on the on the peer, uh, you get notified either through uh, web socket uh, connections or through a webhook uh, uh, endpoint that you um, uh, implement yourself. Uh, transaction submission are supported both in sync and async mode. Sync mode means you, your request is blocked until the uh, transaction gets mined into a block and uh, it returns at that point. Async mode, you just send it in and forget about it. Uh, you have a receipt endpoint um, to query for that the status of that transaction, whether it succeeded or not. So uh, that's the high level overview. Uh, and we're going to spend the, uh, most of the time of this session looking at um, FebConnect in, uh, in action. I could be doing this uh, in my uh, local uh, environment, so you can use Nico's fantastic tool to bring down uh, all the images that you need to build a local Firefly environment, including the underlying ledger. So we will stand up a uh, Ethereum uh, blockchain locally or a Fabric blockchain locally. Uh, when we do Fabric, uh, we will uh, give you orderer and peer, create a channel, deploy some chain code for you. So I could do all that in, uh, uh, in that way, uh, in, but that will be all mostly uh, command line, which could be a little boring, especially uh, after lunch. So instead, uh, let's look at this graphical experience uh, with Kaleido. Um, Kaleido is a commercial platform that uh, allows you to manage uh, blockchains. So we support all the, all the major flavors of enterprise DLT protocols. Um, Quorum on the Ethereum side, Quorum, Hyperledger Besu, Go Ethereum, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, and Corda. Uh, recently, we just added uh, Polygon Edge, which is a new uh, entry in the, in the permissioned blockchain side. Um, you can easily create uh, a blockchain network on Clido. Uh, just add your own node. For example, uh, in this Fabric environment, I have two organizations. Each one have their own order node and their own peer node, and each have their own uh, uh, CA. To add a new node, uh, you can just add an order node and then um, give it a name, and then you, you can click go. In, in about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, uh, you have your node running uh, in the started state. So we don't have to do that. Um, already have this network um, up and running. So let's, uh, let's deploy some chain code. Um, I've already got some chain code compiled uh, locally. So <coughs> what I can do is, um, let me see. Okay, so let's create a new chain code. Let's say this is um, like a global forum demo. And 
It can be Golang or Node.js. So we'll pick Golang. So <coughs> now let's upload a new version. So on my laptop, I already got a bunch of chain code. Um, each, you know, slightly different uh, version. Uh, so I'm gonna just pick a random version. And then for this implementation, we don't need chain code to be initialized. So we'll leave that checkbox unchecked. So now this, <coughs> this has been uploaded to Kaleido. Um, we can now promote it to, uh, to the fabric environment we have. So the target, um <coughs> because uh, within each consortium, you can have many, many blockchain instances. So this step is to say, push the chain code that I just uploaded to my network, uh, to my consortium, uh, to uh, this particular uh, blockchain network. So now, so the nodes on this network uh, have received it. So next step is to deploy it to a channel. So all uh, fabric no networks created on Kaleido have a default channel. This way you add your nodes and you already have a channel ready to go. You don't have to worry about you know, defining channels, think about the uh, different channel policies, all that. This is a very quick way to get started. Of course, if you wanna create your own channel with, with your own policy, uh, you can do that with both the, both the UI and the API. We'll just go with the default, uh, and you can see this is gonna be installed uh, on the various uh, peers in the channel, and uh, it'll be approved for the org and then committed. Because this channel only has um, two memberships, this, these two memberships don't have any approval, but it's, it's ready to go because all the memberships in this channel uh, have approved it and have it committed. So. This chain code, as far as uh, the demo is concerned, is ready to be invoked. Now, finally, uh, we're getting to uh, uh, Fab Connect. So, uh, Fab Connect is a one-to-one -one binding to a target orderer and the target um, a target peer. So, we have our uh, peer one. So. If you go to the REST API gateway, this is a fancy term we give uh, Fab Connect on Kaleido. But this is essentially the, all the endpoints you get uh, when you fire up uh, Fab Connect. Uh, so under the cover, what the platform have done is uh, in order to launch uh, a Fab Connect instance, you need to give it two configuration fi files. One is a simple configuration that tells it uh, you know, a few high-level parameters, but importantly, it tells it uh, where to look for the CCP, you know, the common connection profile that tells the, um, uh, the node uh, where is the, because under the cover, it uses Fabric SDK, right? So it needs to use the profile to know uh, how to talk to uh, the endpoints. Uh, so these are the uh, REST endpoint that Fab, Fab Connect supports. For example, let's um, try to see what um, um, uh, identities we have already created. Um, before the demo, I created uh, a user, uh, user one as a signing identity. Let's go ahead and create a new one. So we will just do a post and we call it user two. We don't need any of these others. the secret, so go ahead and copy. And now you can do a post to enroll. Then give it the secret. Execute. Um, say again. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Too fast. So now this user will be <coughs> uh, enrolled. So it's got a enrollment uh, 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 certificate. And we're ready to use that to send in some transactions. So if we, so 
as I mentioned, um, if you do uh, print equals to true, then this will block until the response is back. So you can use the timer as you would true. Channel is default channel. Change those. Uh, we call it, I call it the global form demo. And then function is, this is a create create asset demo. And the argument, uh, I think, is ID first. And then the size, color, owner, and price. Right? And init is, is false. So size, oh, we must have misspelled it. Uh, what was the name of the name we gave uh, a single project? Of course, this has never happened, right? Until you do a live demo. That's a good question. Uh, let's double check. Um, so we deploy that to uh, app info CS uh, demo, and that was the. Unfortunately, the time is up, um, but <laughs> if you try this yourself, <laughs> you can create a, a, a free account on Crida. So we have perpetual free, uh, free here, student account, and just try this yourself. We have a demo uh, video on um, Crida channel in uh, YouTube. Follow along, try it yourself. Uh, the demo sh also shows you how to, how to do uh, uh, event testing. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time today. But uh, happy to chat with any of you guys, uh, and thanks for coming. Correct, yeah. Mm. Nico, uh, do you want to take this one? There's, uh, so the question is, is there uh, a place to compare the features between the open source version of Firefly versus enterprise version? I know it's in your head, but. Yep. Yes, sir. Can far, the question is, can Firefly connect to permissioned and permissionless blockchains? Uh, yes, so the answer is yes. The same, the same Firefly instance can be connected to multiple uh, blockchains. Um, in fact, if you go to dem, um, Nico's demo, uh, it's at 4.30, he will show a demo where a Firefly instance is configured to connect to a chain running on Kaleido, I believe. Okay, a permission chain somewhere running. And, uh, and to Polygon, which is a public chain. Um, the isolation is by namespace. A namespace is top level construct on Firefly. Uh, you can say this name, namespace is dedicated to this 
blockchain that can be permission or permissionless, the next namespace is dedicated to another blockchain. Yeah. So uh, Fabric 2.4 is what you two point dot four dot three is what you get on Clido. Um, Firefly itself has been t tested with two dot three and two dot four. Yes, sir. I'm being kicked out. So happy to be around uh, in the in the hallway, and then we can uh, chat more.